So we back with another video. Today we got y'all boys with the NFL top, I guess, 50 players. Uh, we're going to do this ooh -woo style, ox battle style, but for players, we're going to be comparing players that really don't even be in the same position. Some going to be in the same position. Some not even going to be on the same side of the football field. And we're going to be discussing and getting all the way down to who's the best player in the NFL. And this is, we kind of already know who's the best, but we're going to be able to do like some very interesting player comparisons in this video. If you guys do want more videos like this, make sure to like the video. Um, I do plan on reacting to the NFL 100. I think they started doing that early. So, um, yeah, but I did prepare a tier list to do where I pretty much got me and my chat. We got a hundred players and I'm going to put them all on the tier list and I'm going to rank all of those players in order from 100 all the way to 1. So if y'all do want that as well, make sure to like the video. Make sure to subscribe if you're new. Further ado, let's hop into it. Let's go! All right, hopping into it. Best NFL player 2024. We got 64 players. It's going to be rookies in here, so I know some of y'all going to be mad about that. But yeah, come on, let's be for real. Um, first matchup, Dexter Lawrence versus Brees Hall. Um, this is a very, very tough matchup. But I ain't gonna lie, I'm gonna have to go Dexter Lawrence, personally. I think Dexter Lawrence is a little bit more dominant than Brees Hall at this point. Next, Michael Parsons and Rashawn Slater. I like Rashawn Slater, but I think Michael Parsons has just a little bit more of an impact on the game. Now, this is gonna, yeah, let me go ahead and break this down before we go too far. This is gonna be based off how I deem positional value works as well with how good the player is so that is going to have an impact on it because it is football so there are certain positions that's going to have more impact but sometimes the player can be so good that the positional impact doesn't matter as much so hopefully that makes sense now this one is tay versus cmc now if you i ain't gonna lie if you've seen the videos you know how i feel about tay i'm very high on tay but i will say this i think i'm like a I'm like the odd one in. I don't think Rod receivers is as valuable as other people. I personally believe running backs outside of maybe some offensive linemen are the most valuable besides the quarterback on the offensive side of the field. The only thing I think that kind of really holds running backs back from Rod receivers and tight ends is the fact that running backs, they, they got a little bit more wear and tear on their body compared to a wide receiver or a tight end. And they just seem to wear down a lot faster. But I ain't gonna lie. Comparing Tay, who I think could be arguably the best wide receiver, to who I deem the best running back, I'm gonna have to go with CMC. I don't know if that's a hot take or not, but I'm gonna go CMC. Tyreek Hill versus Kyle Hamilton. I love Kyle Hamilton. But again, I do, I'm gonna be honest. Nickel safety is a very important position i don't think the way kyle hamilton plays it is as important as say for an example like trent mcduffie but i think i do think kyle hamilton is a very important player but at the end of the day i think tyreek hill is the best wide receiver and i and i love tay but i gotta give it to him antoine winfield versus jeffrey simmons now this is a very important match because i do think um antoine winfield is kind of in that similar role to kind of what kyle hamilton is in but Jeffrey Simmons is more like a pass rusher, run stopper, interior defensive line, 3-4-D lineman. Um, so that is a very interesting matchup. Because I do think interior pressure, in my opinion, is more important than exterior. Now, if you have a dominant exterior, then it can get a little gross. But this is a tough one because I do think Jeffrey Simmons is one of the top five but if he was a top one of those top three, I think I would be able to say for sure I would have him over Antoine Winfield. But I'm gonna go Antoine Winfield on this one, personally. I think I think that he's just better in my opinion, and his impact is not that much less. Trent McDuffie versus Jalen Hurts. See, this is where it gets tough when we start comparing some of these quarterbacks. And Trent McDuffie, in my opinion, I think the Chiefs people love to give Mahomes all that credit, but I'm gonna be honest. That defense was really what did the job for the Chiefs last year in the playoffs and the regular season. Well, really mainly the regular season. Now, the playoffs came, the offense started to go up again. But the defense kind of stayed true and stayed the same throughout the regular season and throughout the playoffs. It got even better. So, I think Trick McDuffie was the... This may be a hot take as well. I think Trick McDuffie was the best player on the defense as well. 
not Chris Jones. I think him and Chris Jones is debatable, though. I ain't like I'm saying it's not close. But comparing that to Jalen Hurts, especially if we're doing projections for this season, that's a tough one because quarterbacks is so much more impactful than all the other positions. That's a tough one. That's a really tough one. And I'm really high on Trick McDuffie. I'm not as high on Jalen Hurts. I don't even know if I think Jalen Hurts is a top 10 QB, but quarterbacks is so important. So important. But I think the way that Chip McDuffie is used, where he can pretty much take away a a team's number one option, whether that be the tight end, whether that be the slot, whether that be their number one wide receiver, it doesn't really matter. Chip McDuffie is very good at taking away what other teams want to do. And the way Spagnola uses him is really, really good. And the same thing with how they kind of use Tyron Matthew. But he's a better version of it. That's tough. That's very tough. I would say... That's very tough. I don't know if Jalen Hurts is going to be as important to his team this year as he was in the previous two because Saquon as well is going to be added. And I think the loss of Jason Kelsey may nerf the tush push a little bit. I think I'm going to have to lean McDuffie on this one. I think I'm going to have to lean McDuffie on this one. Quentin Nelson, B. John. That's a tough one. See, he's an interior offensive lineman. I think interior office alignment is important, but I, I would really lean more towards tackles, personally. But Quentin Nelson is probably the best interior office alignment in the league. That's a very tough one. Because I think B. John is the only person I would personally say is debatable with CMC. I wouldn't say Saquon, JT, none of them. I think B. John is the only person with the talent to even be able to match him, in my honest opinion. But with that being said, I do think Quentin Nelson is the best interior offensive lineman in the league. So I'm going to have to go with Quentin Johnson, especially with Jason Kelsey retired and all that. I think I would have to go Quentin John- Nelson. Creed Humphrey. That's a very... See, this is the... Bro, everyone with the quarterback is going to be weird, man. But I do think Quentin... I think Creed Humphrey is better than Matthew Stafford. I ain't going to lie. I do. I ain't even going to fight that one for too long. Matt Milano versus Andrew Thomas. Um, This is a very tough one because I, I think Matt Milano is a top two linebacker in the league. But Andrew Thomas is one of the best tackles in the league. And But he's on a very, like, this is the thing I'm saying. Andrew Thomas is on a team with a bad offense and a bad offensive line. But he's, like, one of the only bright spots of the whole thing. But him being... One of the best tackles in the league doesn't really have a huge impact on how good the offensive line is. Because the offensive line is still bad. Whereas for Matt Milano, you just look at last year. How much worse the Bills defense was without him. I'm going to have to go Matt Milano on that. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to have to go Matt Milano on that one. Personally. Lamar, Chris Jones. Chris Jones. Damn, I know I said I had McDuffie over uh, Chris Jones, but I'm lucky he may have been capping with that one. Think about it. Yeah, I think I may actually have Chris Jones over uh, McDuffie. But with that being said, and the reason why I said that is because I'm not taking Trip McDuffie over Lamar. But I can damn near, I can damn near make a case for Chris Jones over Lamar. I ain't gonna lie. I'm gonna go Lamar, but I need him to get it done in the playoffs. And Chris Jones has got it done multiple times in the playoffs and made huge plays. I put the wrong name. This is, I don't even know how this happened. I'm going to be honest. Trent Williams versus Max Crosby. This is, I'm going to have to go Trent Williams. But hey, hey for somebody, this is going to get somebody. This is going to get somebody. If you Depending on how high you are on Max Crosby, that's going to get you. But I'm as high as it gets on Max Crosby, but I got to go uh, Trent. I got to go Trent. Marvin Harrison or uh, Justin Herbert. I'm going to go Justin. Shout out Marv. I did put the rookies on here, but I thought it would be like a better better one for him, but it just wasn't. Aaron Rodgers or Amon Ross St. Brown. At this point, I'm going to have to say St. Brown. I don't know. That's actually tough because you thought Tristan Wirfs was on the 49ers? Nah, 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 nah. I just messed that one up. He's on the Buccaneers. That was Trent Trent Williams. Um, Monroe St. Brown. This is a tough one because A. Rod is a better football player. 
in my opinion. He's better. Is he going to be healthy? Is he going to miss games for these miscellaneous whatever? If we just talk about when they're playing, I would take A-Rod over Amon Ra. If I had to pick between the two, if I needed a quarterback and I needed a wide receiver, I would take A-Rod before I take Amon Ra, personally. So, yeah, I'm going to go A-Rod. I'm going to go A-Rod. Don't even need to discuss it. Don't even need to discuss it. Shout out Christian Wilkins, Nick Bosa, or Jesse Bates. This is a very interesting one because I do think Nick Bosa is a very good pass rusher, but he's not on the same level of run stopper as he is as a pass rusher. Jesse Bates just showed the previous year he's a ridiculous coverage guy that can also really help you in a run. And he was doing that with no pass rush. Secondary outside of him and AJ Terrell is not very good. And yeah, I really do think Jesse Bates is a very, 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 very good guy. And I've been saying this for years when he was on the Bengals, and he finally started getting his credit he deserved when he was on the Falcons. I do think he's the best safety in the league. It just is very, very tough to compare a safety to a pass rusher. And pass rushers are so important because that is like the that is like the main position that you can kind of counteract. A quarterback in today's league. It used to be middle linebackers because those are the guys that's thinking the game, changing the plays, all this type of stuff. So anytime a quarterback would change the play, middle linebackers would change the play. It don't happen as much anymore. There are guys, but it's not as frequent. So I'm gonna say Nick Bosa. I didn't click him. I would say Nick Bosa. Neighbors, no, we don't need to discuss it. Hey, shout out neighbors though. You know what I'm saying? We don't need to discuss that. Lane Johnson, Panay Sewell. Shout out Lane Johnson. I'm going Panay. I think I think Panay is better at this point in his career. Justin Jefferson, Minka Fitzpatrick. I'm going JJ. Personally. Shout out Minka though. Puka or CJ Stroud? I'm gonna go CJ, but shout out Puka. I do think Puka had a better rookie year though. For rookie of the year, I thought Puka should have won. But I did think CJ Stroud was a better player. So yeah. If I would have had a vote, I would have gave it to Puka. He literally broke the record for rookie catches and yards. I don't really understand what was going on there. A lot of people didn't have the Rams making the playoffs before that. I was making videos, putting them in the playoffs, and people was calling me crazy. So, yeah. Frank Ragnar or Miles um, Garrett. We're going Miles on that. Shout out to Frank. Uh, Brian, hey, shout out to Frank because he was playing through a crazy injury in the playoffs. I thought he was going to retire. He came back. So, shout out to bro. Jabari and Chase and Brian Branch. That's a good shout for Brian Branch. That's a guy I should have had on the safeties, but I didn't. CD Lamb or AJ, I'm going to go with CD Lamb. I've had him over him for the past two years. So, yeah. PS2 or Dak Prescott. I ain't gonna lie. See, Cowboys fans finna get on me, but I ain't gonna lie. Give me PS2. I ain't gonna cap. Give me PS2. Duran James or Tristan Wirfs? I love Duran, so my bias is crazy. So I'm really wanting to pick Duran, but I'm gonna have to go Tristan Wirfs. One of the best young tackles in the league. Um, just simple as that. Zach Martin and Joe Burrow. I'm going Joe. I'm gonna go Joey B. I'm gonna go Joey B. Brock Purdy or Chris Lindstrom. See, this is a tougher one. This is a tough one because this is an interior guy. I think Zach Martin's better. I think Quentin Nelson's better. But if we had to go over like more interior, I guess we have to say guys like Creed Humphrey. I guess we would have to. I think he's in that Frank Ragnall area. Him and Chris Lindstrom, Frank Ragnall. I think Creed Humphrey, Quentin Nelson, and Zach Martin are the guys that's better. But Zach Martin low-key may not be. Chris Lindstrom could be in those debates. But I think... Oh, this is the tough one. Cause quarterback Brock Purdy. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Chris Lindstrom. I'm gonna go Chris Lindstrom. I'm gonna go Chris Lindstrom. I think he's very important to that Falcons running game and stuff like that. George Kittle or Jalen Ramsey. At this point in both of their careers, this is actually a really tough one for me. All the things that George Kittle provides to the team. See, this is what I'm saying when it comes to wide receivers. Wide receivers just don't provide as much as like a running back and a tight end to a team in my honest opinion like just think about all the things that George Kittle is asked to do he's asked to block not only in the run but in the pass he's expected to go out and catch passes and be a great run after catch guy he's expected to be sometimes they even use him as a runner like there's a lot of things that you got to do as George Kittle but on the flip side Jalen Ramsey may not be as good as he used to be because of athleticism but he's still one of the smartest DBs in the league, and he's one of the best tackling corners in the league still. So, 
Yeah, and he's a guy that he's a guy that follows people. He's not one of these guys that just stay to one side of the field. He'll go in the slot. He'll go to the other side. He'll, he'll play all over the field. I'm gonna go Jalen Ramsey. I'm gonna go Jalen Ramsey. JT. Oh, I didn't put a number. I didn't put nothing for Rokon. Some of this just glitched because I definitely did put Rokon. Some of this just grit glitched, but. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. Roquan is the best linebacker in the league, but JT is tough. I'm gonna have to go. J, uh, I'm gonna go Roquan because JT been missing games past two years. But I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Roquan. Sauce or Jalen Johnson? Give me sauce. Give me sauce. Y'all seen my cornerbacks for the top five? It, just give me sauce. Joe Alt or Jordan Love? I do think Joe Alt gonna be one of the best linemen in year one. Stamp it. But I'm gonna have to go with Jordan Love. Olakon is not better than Matt Milano or um, Roquan. I don't know what you on. Um, Caleb Williams or Travis Kelsey? Holy shit. See? See, this is where it get weird, bro. Because Travis Kelsey, in my opinion, was not good for Travis Kelsey. In my opinion. I don't think he's the best tight end in the league anymore. I do think he's going to be better. He could be better this year than he was last year. Because he was playing through injury a lot last year. And I think that was really more so what it was. But in comparison to Caleb, you got to think about all the stuff that Caleb got on his team. I think Caleb may have a better year, but I'm going to go Travis Kelsey because, yeah, that's projection. We've seen enough. Josh Allen and Quentin Williams. Shout out Quentin Williams. He's one of those top three defensive tackles, but I'm going to go Josh Allen. I'm going to go Josh Allen. TJ Watt or Nick Bosa? I don't even, See, this is very debatable. This is very debatable. But I'm going to go, give me T.J. Watt. Give me T.J. Watt. Quinnen, ah, uh, damn. Pat Mahomes. Come on, man. We kind of already know. CMC or A-Rod. See, this is where I can think I can go CMC, personally. Creed Humphrey, Sauce Gardner. I like Creed Humphrey a lot, but I think I would go Sauce, personally. Lamar or Trent Williams. That is, a, that is one I probably have to go Trent. I think I would have to go Trent on that one. Justin Herbert or Trent McDuffie? See, now this is a lot closer because Justin Herbert is an elite quarterback, and I can stamp it in my opinion. He's elite, and I know he's a top 10, maybe top 7. Trent McDuffie is very special. I'm going to go Justin, though. I'm going to go Justin. I'm going to go Justin. Like, having that caliber of a quarterback on your team... You can't. It's a lot harder to replace than having. Ah, man, but oh, damn, that's that's tough. That's tough. That's tough. That's tough. That's tough. That's tough. Jalen uh, Ramsey, Jamar Chase. I'm gonna go Chase. PS two, Tyreek. I'm gonna go Tyreek. Jordan Love, Dexter Lawrence. See, I wish we could have did a Chase versus Trent, a Tyreek versus Trent. You know what I'm saying? Like the best corner versus best wide receivers, but we can't now. Um, Dexter Lawrence, Jordan Love. I'm very high on Jordan Love. I'm very high on Jordan Love, but give me Dexter Lawrence, personally. CeeDee Lamb or Chris Lindstrom? I'm going to go CD on that one. I'm going to go CD on that one. Travis Kelsey, Micah. I'm going to go Micah. It's not very close to me. Antoine Winfield, Matt Milano. Ooh, man, Matt Milano. Man, I really do think Matt Milano is one of the more underrated guys in the league, but Antoine Winfield is very, very important to that defense as well. I would I would have to say Matt Milano may be more replaceable than Antoine Winfield. I think I would have to say that. C.J. Stroud or Justin Jefferson? I almost went C.J. Stroud a little too quick on that one. But I really do think C.J. Stroud... It's going to be better than Justin Jefferson this year. I think CJ's not going to be a top three quarterback this year. Oh, man. That's a tough one, though, man. I don't know if he's shown enough. Yeah, he's because he's young, I'm going to go Justin Jefferson. I'm going to go Justin Jefferson. I'm going to go Justin Jefferson. Uh, Tristan Wirfs. I'm going to go Miles Garrett. Josh Allen, Panay. I'm going to go Josh Allen. Joe Burrow, Roquan. And that's a tough one and people want to give it. 
I think Roquan is one of those linebackers that kind of still have that older, but he's not as good as the older, and he's not as smart as the older linebackers. But he's very, very good. Um... I'm going to go Joe Burrow, though. I'm going to go Joe Burrow. I'm going to go Joe Burrow. CMC or Sauce? I'm going to go CMC. I didn't mean to do that. Well, well, I meant to pick CMC, but, hey, if you watch the video, you know. Dexter Lawrence or Trent? I'm going to go Trent. I think Trent is better. Um, Justin uh, Herbert? I'm going to go Tyreek. TJ Watt or Antoine Winfield? TJ Watt. Some of these are very easy, to be honest. These are very, like, that's very easy. That's very easy. Now, this is one that people have been debating for time right here, man. See, this is one that's been debated for time. Now, I ain't gonna lie. This ain't really tough for me at all. Josh Allen is the second best quarterback in the league by far. I don't even think it's really close. I don't really see what we will see. Now, the only way you can really go about this angle for Joe Burrow is he beat Mahomes. No one else has beat Mahomes in the play, in the league right now. Brady is gone. Joe Burrow is the only person that can say that he beat Mahomes in the playoffs. No one else can say that. He has that on his resume. That is a huge thing on his resume. Like That's huge. At the end of the day, though, Joe Burrow, man, I need you to be healthy. I do think you're one of the smartest, if not the smartest quarterback in the league. But you got to be healthy. And when you don't, when you, when you play and you're not healthy, you don't look the same. So I need you to be healthy. And that's just what it is. But I do think Josh Allen, better arm, way, I would say Joe Burrow is smarter, but he's better with his feet. He's better at creating time. He's better with worse receivers. I think that Josh Allen has a lot more going for him. I think Joe Burrow has a better scheme. I think Joe Burrow has better wide right receivers. I think Joe Burrow at this point has a better O-line. That's one of the only things that he had going for him the other way was his offensive line was bad. But Joe Burrow, the offensive line this year is going to be very, very good. Um, running game, I would say Josh Allen probably got it. But you got to think about it. Josh Allen also helps his running game. So it's kind of tough there. But I'm going to go Josh Allen. I'm going to go Josh Allen. Um, Micah versus CD. I'm going Micah. I wonder how Cowboys fans feel about that. Do they still? I know people. I know a lot of Cowboys fans don't really mess with Micah in the podcast. So, has they grown? Have they grown off him or whatever? Um, this was supposed to be CMC versus Miles Garrett. See, if it was CMC versus Miles Garrett, that'd been a good debate. Cause CMC, I ain't gonna lie. People be kind of sleeping on how special of a player CMC is. CMC is like a top. If CMC was a slot receiver, he would be a top three slot receiver in the league. Literally. He's literally like a top three slot receiver caliber receiver while also being one of the best runners of the football in the entire NFL. And he's all that in one body. Like, yeah, CMC is a very, very special player. But come on, Miles Garrett is just a very special guy. So if we say Miles Garrett versus Sauce, that's not close. And then we got Josh Allen versus Trent. Now, this is a very tough one. Trent, in my opinion, is the best tackle in the league. I don't personally think it's close. I think what Trent provides in the pass game, but what he provides as a mauler in the run game, even at his age, is amazing. Now, he is getting up there in age. You can't expect regression. You can't expect injuries with Trent. But when he's on the field, it is not debatable. He's one of the best players in the entire NFL. And it's been like that for like the past three years. But Josh Allen, on the other hand, is a guy that you just cannot duplicate. The only person, in my opinion, I can say for sure better is Pat Mahomes. Everybody else is debatable. Everybody else. So Trent is in that convo. Some of them pastors in that convo. And when it comes to being debatable, what really what really kind of makes the difference is positional value. Now, does Josh Allen have his issues? Yes. He also has the issues of, um, what is it called? The turnovers. He's definitely turnover prone. But I think he does make up for that with how good he is at scoring points. There's nobody in the league that's better at Josh Allen at scoring points, and that's not really debatable. But he does have to calm down on the scoring points. I think with a better scheme, not as much reliance on him as a player and his talent, I think they'll be a little bit more calmed down. But I'm interested to see if that's calmed down, will the TDs calm down too? Because they have gotten rid of a lot of guys. So if we think about coming into this year, who I think will be better, I think 49ers have a very interesting situation going on with Ayuk. But I do think they're still going to be a very good offense. The Bills, on the other hand, they did lose Stephon Diggs. They did lose Gabe Davis. That is pretty big, but they do have a better scheme going into this year. They actually have a scheme going into this year where I don't really think they had one going into last year where they're going to be like more of a collective more than just focusing on one. So I think Josh Allen, 
I would have to give Josh Allen the, the edge personally. Um, next, Michael Tyreek Hill or TJ Watt. This is a very good one. This is a very good one because Tyreek Hill is a guy. I, I know I said this. I I do think running backs, tight ends, honestly, are more valuable because they do more. But when you have a guy like Tyreek Hill, who is genuinely unguardable because of the athleticism gap that he just provides to any team, um, it's not really it's not really a way you can kind of duplicate that. I'm gonna be honest. Like, take positional value out of it. Trent, I'm gonna be honest. Tyreek Hill may be the best player in the league if you take the positional value out of it. Like, being honest, like. There is no real way to stop him, especially when you put him with Andy Reid and Mike McDaniels. It's just simple as that. So, I don't really, man, this is a tough one. I like people. I, I know people going to want to fight this one, but this is a tough one. And I know people going to be like, well, what, what about in the playoffs? I will be honest with you. Once he hit past like week 13, he was playing through injury. I'm not holding him back from that. We've seen what Tyreek Hill do in the playoffs. We, don't act like we didn't see him on the Chiefs. We seen what he does in the playoffs. Don't don't act like that one little, you know what I'm saying, was all his fault. Yeah, he had some drops, but he had a bad game. You know what I'm saying? I'm not really holding that fully against him because we've seen him be very, very good in the playoffs. T.J. Wild, on the other hand, in my opinion, is probably the most underrated player in the league. I said this for the NFL 100 last year. T.J. Watt, what he provides is, like, crazy, like, He's gonna he's gonna make he's genuinely the clutchest defender in the league. I don't think it's close. The plays that he makes are always in the biggest moments of the game. I've seen him as a pass rusher get pick six to win the game, a fumble six to win the game, huge sacks to end the game, and yeah, bro, he is literally the epitome of what it means to be clutch as a defensive player. Like he just makes the plays when it matters most, literally. And T.J. Watt is super impactful. Like, he doesn't just get sacks. He gets them when you need them. That's the that's a big thing. That's a huge thing. This is as tough of a matchup as I could have had, man. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. <sighs> this is tough right here, man. Tyreek Hill, T.J. Who y'all got, man? I ain't going to lie. I need some help on this one. I actually need some help on this one. T.J. Watt and Tyreek. This is tough. I really like. I'm really thinking about it. How clutch T.J. Watt is and like his timeliness. I should have probably put him as the number one pass rusher because Micah is not doing that. Uh, Miles Garrett is not doing that. And you got to think about all the different things he does besides get sacks. Um, I think that the other two are more balanced in terms of run stopping. But I think that what he provides as uh, what's it called? Um, in coverage, I think he he makes plays in coverage. I think Micah may be the better coverage guy, but I think T.J. Watt does make more plays in coverage when he drops back in coverage. Um, that's a tough one. That's a very tough one. I will probably have to say... I'll probably have to say Tyreek, because what Tyreek gives you to a team... You literally can't duplicate it, in my opinion. I think you the fact that there are Miles Garrett's, the fact that there are Micah Parsons kind of holds it, it back for T.J. Watt. Like, you can get other guys of that same caliber and it's debatable. I really don't think you, like, even if you think it's debate, wide receiver is debatable, you cannot tell me what Tyreek provides to a team. You can replicate that from anyone. And I, that's just how I feel. Miles Garrett versus Pat Mahomes. Shout out Pat Mahomes. I don't think he was as good last year, but come on, man. Come on, man. What he's done to adjust is amazing. Josh Allen and Tyreek. This is another good debate. I really do think hey, Tyreek and Josh Allen would be very special, but man, we already seen him with Mahomes, so like, I don't really know. But it's kind of funny to me that he's having better seasons with the Dolphins than he was with the Chiefs. Now, you could say because there's no Kelsey, but I would say they got they got some guys over there with the Dolphins, so I don't know. I just think... Mike McDaniels may have a better offense. Is that crazy to say? But, um. <sighs> Josh Allen is a very, very special player. Like, I really do think if Mahomes wasn't in this era, we would look at Josh Allen a lot different. A lot different. Um. Tch. 
That's this is a tough one, man. Tyreek is very special. He's very special. This is a very tough one. I'ma probably have to lean. Oh man. See, I can do the same thing as I did with the last one for Tyreek. Like, because there's a Mahomes that can kind of hold back Josh Allen, but that don't really work the same way because there's not a Michael Parsons and a Miles Garrett and a Nick Bosa and a Max Crosby that you can bait. It's really, in my opinion, only my Mahomes. And I think it's just Mahomes is just better, you know? Um, that's just a hump Josh Allen has not been able to get over. Um... But the way Josh Allen has to carry his team offensively the past couple of years, despite the scheme, is really what's huge for me. And even when Tyreek was on that Chiefs team, the only, I'm not going to say the only reason, but the reason they lost in that conference championship a couple years ago was really because Josh Allen just didn't get the ball back. But go look at those drives in the fourth quarter Josh Allen was doing. The fourth downs, the third downs, he was having to clinch. I'm be real, man, that... That, that really makes it tough for me to put guys over him. Really, it really does. Um, just the certain plays that Josh Allen makes that really no one else can. But the thing is, he's going against Tyreek, who literally has the same argument. Oh, see, that's tough. This is very tough. I'm going to be honest. See, Tyreek has some good matchups because TJ Watt makes plays that I really feel like nobody else can make. Josh Allen makes plays that really feels like no one else can make. But Tyreek is the epitome of that. He's literally physically the epitome of that. So I'm going to have to go Tyreek. As much as I love Josh Allen, I'm going to have to go Tyreek, man. I'm going to have to. And then for the final two, Mahomes versus Tyreek. I'll be honest. This is what I'll say. This is what I'll say. The fact that these two guys played on the same team, and I'll, re I'll be real with you. I used to really look down on uh, Tyreek because I'm like, he plays with Andy Reid. He plays with Mahomes. Duh, he's going to be that good because he's so fast. But he's shown me he's just, his hands are way better um, than I thought. His route running is way better. And he's just a better player overall than I thought. But the speed is what really puts him over the top. That's not really debatable. That's not really debatable at all. And he got put with the coach who's probably the smartest in the league. But we got to talk about Mahomes, man. Mahomes is just a very, very special talent. And the fact that he has changed his game completely since the loss of Tyreek is nothing short of greatness. That's what greatness does. And I got to go with Mahomes as the number one player in the NFL. Who else would I have put? Come on, let's be for real. Uh, that's my best NFL player. Uh, Uwu, tier list, whatever you want to call it. Mahomes ends up winning, winning. I just made this this morning, so a couple people have already done it. But yeah, I got Mahomes. Somebody had Jalen Hurts as the number one. That's very interesting. Uh, let's see how many more people have done it. I think it's only like five. But yeah, if you guys do want the link, I will put it in the comments or link in the description if you guys do want it. But yeah, that's my top 50, really. And we were doing a lot of player comps really there. It's kind of more like an ox battle. But I will be doing the top 100 tier list. I will be reacting to the NFL 100. So if you guys do want that, make sure to like the video. Make sure to subscribe. All that good stuff out the way. Without further ado, man, it's your boy Fitz. I'm out of it, man. Tell him to bring me my money. Yeah!